My name is Dave Politis, and this is Missing 411, the first installment about people that have disappeared in the wilds of North America. We're here at the Poudre Canyon, about 40 miles due west of Fort Collins, Colorado, along Highway 14. The mountains behind me represent the area surrounding the Big South Trail in the area where Jared disappeared approximately 20 miles away. You're going to go with me as we head to the fish hatchery where Jared and the singles group first visited and then they went on to the Big South Trail where Jared disappeared. This is a rugged area of Colorado. Elevation ranges from 8,800 feet to approximately 9,500 feet. It's an area that has many large mammals, bears, mountain lions, cougars, elk, and deer. The area here is enshrouded in mystery over the years from miners to Indians. So come with me on our first journey. The next stop is the fish hatchery. This is location number two that the singles group came with Jared and his sister. It sits adjacent to the Cache Laputa River. The river is known throughout northern Colorado as a world class fly fishing location. They spent a short amount of time here and this is where destination and reality met because they decided that they wanted to walk a local trail, the Big South Trail. They left this location and without the approval of Alan, they took the two kids to the trailhead and that's where we'll go next. So this is where it all started, the, the trail hike with the uh, Christian group and Jared and Jocelyn at Adero. When they got here, the group decided that they were going to hike up this trail right here. And they didn't get too far before some unusual things happened, which we'll talk about in a second. But this is the only trailhead that you'll ever see, ever, where it talks about child safety on the trail and what to do if your child disappears. Just a very short ways, a couple hundred yards up the trail, you reach the Comanche Peak Wilderness. A wilderness zone means you can't drive any cars, you can't take anyone into the area. You can only walk or take on, take on a horseback. This area of the Comanche Peak, it's very wild, very quick, with elk herds, mountain lions, bears, etc. So, we're going to take a hike up the wilderness, and we'll show you what it looks like up there. We're now at campground number two, about 40 minutes down the trail. And this is the area where Jared, walking down the trail alone, came across two fishermen next to the river. He asked the two men if they'd seen any bear on the trail. The two men responded that they hadn't seen bear and they hadn't known of any bear on these trails. And Jared nodded to him. The men didn't stop him and the boy continued past us down further on the trail. These were the last two people to see Jared alive. Well, we're at 9,125 feet, about 550 feet above the trail where Jared disappeared and the location of his final resting place. This is the area where search and rescue found one tooth and the top of his cranium. They found his pants inside out and they also found his sweatshirt essentially in one piece. They also found two shoes and the shoes show an interesting part of the story in that they almost look brand new not showing the wearer four years in the winter. Now the climb we just made up this hillside is truly remarkable because my partner and I had to get on our hands and knees to make that climb. It, we had to stop numerous times and it was almost an unbelievable trek to get up here with the equipment. The idea that a boy was possibly in the mouth of a mountain lion or a bear and made that journey especially knowing that Jared's pants 
and his shoes were on him when he left the trail, knowing that his shoes were not tied. His dad even said that the shoes never would have made the journey up the side of this hill because they weren't tied and they would have fallen off. So it really makes the mind wonder, how did Jared get up here knowing that the shoes were untied, loose on his feet? He didn't like to wear shoes. And yet he made it up, his remains made it up the side of this hill, intact. His two shoes, pants, and his shirt. His shirt was never found, his, shirt, his sweatshirt was found. And the puzzling part of this story, this, this story isn't a giant, a giant puzzle in and of itself, but as we were putting our bags down and setting up for filming, we made a remarkable, remarkable discovery. As we were putting down our bags, laying on the ground was a Rubik's Cube, and it looked like it had been the, in the wilderness for many years. And that, that ends the story on a puzzling note as to how that got here. So in the name of Alan Adadero, Jared Adadero, and the Adadero family, our prayers are with him. It's been an interesting journey, one that I'm still dumbfounded about. And I hope this added some clarity for you as to the entire circumstances surrounding Jared's disappearance. I'm Dave Politis from Missing 411. See you on our next journey.